this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make parametric equation travel backwards during a certain interval. So last time we we're seeing it, if we graph these parametric equations, and let's just say we want to talk about the interval from 1 to 4. In that case, we start right here and then we end it right here. It's just this piece of the curve. And notice it's this direction that we're traveling. Well, well, now the question is, what if I want to have the same piece of the curve, but I want to go backwards? Meaning I want to start right here and then I want to end right here. So you see the arrows like that. And I know what you guys are thinking. Is it possible for us to just put a 4 here and then put a 1 here instead? No, we cannot do that. Because remember, suppose you are using your graphing calculator. The t minimum has to be always smaller than the t maximum. Right? So we'll keep it like this. I want to go from t is from four, 1 to 4. <laughs> All right, so you guys should pause the video and think about how you can modify the equations so that you can make this travel backwards. So try it first. All right, hopefully you guys all have a chance to try it. And I'm going to assume that some of you guys just plugging negative t into all the t's right here. Am I right? Leave a comment down below, down below if I uh, read your mind. Anyway, let's put that down right here. Suppose we have the x, and once again, x is the function of t. So let me just put down this right here, x, and perhaps you just plug in negative t here. And of course, you have to do the same for the y. So I will put down y of negative t right here. Well, here's the problem. Remember, right here, I still have to start when t is 1. And when you plug in 1 right here, you get x of negative 1 and y of negative 1. But ideally speaking, you want to start right here. This point was when t was 4, so that's x of 4 and then y of 4, like this. In fact, if you have x of negative 1 and y of negative 1, it's not even on this curve at all. So, hmm, that's not that good. In fact, you have the right idea, you must have the negative t, so you can count kind of like go back in time. Okay, that's good. But we have to make this better. Hmm. The idea is that when I plug in 1 into this right here, I want to end up with 4 because this is my starting point now. I want when t is 1 right here, I want to have the old position here. So how can we make that happen? Well, what minus 1 is 4? 5 minus 1 is 4, and how can we get the 5? This is 1, this is 4, you just add them up, and that's the deal, yes. So, what you do is, look at the endpoints of the time interval, you just add them up. You always add up the endpoints. Uh, in this case, it's 5, and you just plug in 5 minus t into the x equation, and of course, also do it to the y equation right here. That's it. Now you see, when you plug in 1 right here, 5 minus 1 is 4, x of 4, congratulation, that was the old point. And now it's going to be right here. How nice is that? So I will just write this down for you guys. Plugging 5 minus t into this t and that t and also that t for the y later on. So you see, this is going to be 5 minus t squared minus 2 times 5 minus t. And then for the y equation, just plug in that. So you get parentheses 5 minus t and plus 1. This is it. That's it. Graph it, you'll see it. And I'm not going to simplify any expression here because this right here tells a lot more like exactly what we did. Hopefully you guys all like this video and be sure to give me a like. And if you are new, please subscribe and also recommend me to your teachers, friends, students, parents, kids, adults, babies, chairs, tables, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, crocodiles, mountain chickens. Anyway, as always, that's it.